Electron Configurations of the Main Group The periodic table of elements predated quantum mechanics and our understanding of electron configurations. Right, quantum mechanics set the rules for the configurations. It was developed by observing how certain elements shared certain characteristics, but differed in weight. These similar elements were thought up as families of elements and now make up the groups in the table. Those are the columns. Right? They're also called families, but more commonly now you call them groups. The periods, or rows, reflected increasing weight within each group. Connecting the observations that led to the periodic table with our modern understanding of quantum mechanics is critical to understanding chemistry. We stated earlier that the main group consists of groups 1 and 2, going down that way, and 13 and 18, as shown in red. We'll begin our study with the first three periods as outlined in blue here, right? Hydrogen there, lithium and sodium, and going across to the rest of the elements. That's our main group. Let's study the first 18 elements to find a pattern. These 18 elements comprise the first three periods of the main group, right? First three period, and if you count all the elements here, you'll find there are 18. Since the first three periods do not include groups 3 to 12, we'll remove those so we have more space for our analysis. We'll also place each group of elements above a table of the electron configurations of those elements. See if you can observe a pattern on the next slide. If not, we'll give you a hint on the slide after that. And here's what we're doing here. This space will not be shown on the next few slides. So here's what our chart looks like now. See how we have groups 1 and 2, and then we cut out all the groups in between until we get to 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So our electron configurations are down here. So you can see hopefully hydrogen matches up with the 1s1. Helium over here matches up with 1s2. And let's just take boron. That goes down to here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, and we'll show one more from the uh, third period. Here's sulfur, 1s2, etc. So please look at this for a bit, pause the video if you need to, and see if you can find a pattern. The hint that was promised are the ovals here in different colors, circling various parts of the electron configurations. And we'll explain that on the very next slide. But again, pause, check it out, and see if that matches what you thought was happening. The circled portion, or the oval portions of the electron configurations, are the outermost electrons, the electrons in the highest occupied shell. All right, so let's just look over here in our first group. The highest occupied shell here is 1, here it's 2, and here it's 3. And then if you go in more into the middle of this, you'll see in addition to 3s2, there's a 3p1. But in any case, all the ovals circle a number that matches the period. These are called the valence electrons, and they determine how an element combines with other elements. Because the valence electrons are the same for elements in the same group, okay, group is going down this way, those elements have similar characteristics. Here's something else. The number of valence electrons in each element within a group, remember groups go down this way, matches the units digit of that group. For instance, in group 2, there are two valence electrons, okay, 2s2, and the 2 here matches the period, and down here you have 3s2, which matches the period. Where do we want to go? Group 16, right here. What is the units digit there? Well, that would be 6. So we have 2s2, 2p4, 2 plus 4, 6. And those are the valence electrons because they have the same shell as the number of the period. Go down one more, 3s2, 3p4, 2 plus 4 equals 6. Six valence electrons. That's group 16. Moving down a group, to higher periods, the energy level of the outer electrons increases. For example, 2s2, 2p1 for boron, 
becomes 3s2, 3p1 for aluminum. So where is that? Let's see, 2s2, 2p1. This would be boron. 3s2, 3p1 right here, that's aluminum. The outer electron configuration is the same, but the energy level n increases from 2 to 3. Right? There's 2, which fits the period, and aluminum is 3, which fits the period. The valence electrons at higher periods are at higher energy, so their atoms are larger. They are also heavier, as they have more protons. An exception is that in group 18, the outer electron configuration of helium that's over here, the 1s2, is different from the other elements in that group. Neon, over here, 2s2, 2p6, and argon, 3s2, 3p6, are different. Okay, they have that p level there. The ns2, np6 pattern repeats in group 18 for the rest of the periodic table. However, in all cases, the top shell is filled so the element is stable and non-reactive. So these are called inert or noble gases. If the outer electrons determine the behavior of elements, what about the inner electrons? And they're highlighted in the blue and green boxes here. They also play a role, but a smaller one than do the outer electrons. Notice that the inner electron configuration is the same across a period. That will provide a shortcut for describing electron configurations. Okay, so here's the example here. Look at this. For the third period, all the inner electrons have the same configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The inner electrons of period 2, and here's the inner electrons in the blue box there, they all have the configuration of helium from period 1, group 18 which is 1s2, right there. The inner electrons of period 3 all have the configuration of neon from period 2, group 18. And that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. See how that repeats over there? And this is repeating over here. We can use shorthand notation to write those electron configurations. Helium, with brackets around it, Right, these guys here like this. That indicates the electron configuration of helium, which is 1s2. Neon, with brackets, indicates the electron configuration of neon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Shorthand notation can be applied to the entire periodic table. So we will write the electron configurations by specifying the inner electrons from the inert gas from the prior period and adding the outer electrons. So let's look at period two. The inert gas from the prior period is helium. This is helium over here. So we have helium in brackets, and then we have the outer electrons below it. And then from period three, the Nobel, the Nobel gas before it in period two is neon. Summarizing what we just said, Noble gas, which are the group 18 elements, are used to write shortened electron configurations, or shorthand. To write that, write the symbol of the noble, noble gas from the preceding period in brackets. Make sure you use brackets and just not normal parentheses. Then add the remaining electrons by starting at group 1 of the element's period and proceeding until reaching the element. Let's work an example with oxygen. First thing you have to do is find oxygen. Well, here it is, okay? Period 16. Identify the noble gas in the preceding period. Well, that's helium over here, right? That's period one. Write helium. So there it is. There's the helium in brackets. Then draw a path from group one to oxygen, filling the 2s orbitals first and then the p orbitals. So our path starts here at lithium, and this is going to be 1s, excuse me, 2s1, this now is 2s2, so now we filled s, okay, so we have to go to p. So this will be 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, and finally 2p4 for oxygen. So the final abbreviation form here showing the orbitals for oxygen is going to be helium in brackets, then 2s2, 
these two electrons, and 2p4, these four electrons. There are six valence electrons. 2s2, 2p4, those are the valence electrons of all six of them. Find the electron configuration of chlorine using shorthand notation. So you can go ahead and pause the video here and work on it, and we'll show you the answer on the next slide. And just recall for a second, here's your s orbitals down here, right? That gives you two electrons, and then your p orbitals will give you the rest of the electrons. Okay, so let's see how you did. First you find chlorine, Cl, then you go to the noble gas in the period above it, which is going to be neon. So there's your brackets for neon. And you go down to period 3, draw the arrow, starting at sodium, all the way to chlorine. So here's 1, excuse me, 3s1, 3s2. Okay, you filled both the orbitals there, the s orbitals here. Now p orbitals, we start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be 3p5. Put it together, you have neon, 3s2, 3p5. Here's a summary of the outer electrons of the main group. And recall, groups are going down this way. Okay, so group one are the alkali metals, then the alkaline earths, and then you go over to the boron group, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, halogens, and finally on the far right side, group 18, you have your noble gases. So here are the numbers of the groups. Here's the outer configuration for alkali metals is going to be an S1, alkaline earths, S2, and then we start building up the p orbitals like this, and you go down to s2p6. In this case, you have eight outer electrons. All we're doing is adding up the s and p electrons, so eight, seven, six, etc. And some uh, properties here, at least for four of these, the alkali metals are very, very reactive. Alkal alkaline earths, reactive, just not as reactive as alkali metals. Then you go to the other extreme, you have halogens that are very reactive, and then the noble gases, which hardly react at all.